This is a weekly summary of interesting news in distributed systems and blockchain. My name is Thomas Borczak, so let's jump right into it. Geomagnetic storm can be observed due to the arrival of coronal mass ejection in short CME. And this CME has already shown strong magnetic field values that can cause potential severe geomagnetic storm conditions on Earth. This could lead to visible auroras in Central Europe. Um, additionally, the sunspot region responsible for this activity has produced two more solar flares, leading to additional CMEs heading towards Earth. With a total of six CMEs expected to affect Earth in the coming days, intense space weather conditions are anticipated, potentially causing further geomagnetic disturbances. And this period of solar activity is one of the strongest of the current solar cycle. And um, the following site here um, shows more information about what's happening. And also the regional news media is reporting about these polar lights here. They have some nice pictures. And if we go here to the Space Weather Prediction Center, we see here already that it is rated as an extreme geomagnetic storm. As I mentioned in the introduction lecture that solar storms can lead to bit flips, I immediately checked my servers which have ECC RAM if they would detect anything. Unfortunately, here no bit flips so far observed. Um, here you see the uptime, it's already more than a year up and running, but still no bit flip observed, unfortunately. The next topic is about API database architecture, which is discussed in the following article here. Um, this discusses the Postgres with PostgreSQL to eliminate the need for manually coding HTTP GET endpoints. And this approach allows Postgres to serve data directly from Postgres tables and views effectively streamlining data retrieval process in a web application architecture. By automating the API creation, developers can focus more on complex business logic and less on routine data delivery mechanisms, which enhances productivity and reduces development time. Compatibility with existing RESTful architectures, CQRS, and even GraphQL is a significant advantage of this method. CQRS, which stands for Command Query Responsibility Segregation, is a software architecture pattern that separates the models used from updating information command from the models used for reading information query. And the architecture separates data retrieval handled by Postgres from data modification handled by the traditional backend processes. Aligning with CQRS principles where different mechanisms are used for reading and writing data. This separation simplifies the overall API structure and helps in maintaining clear boundaries between different operations, making the system easier to manage. The benefits of adopting an API database architecture include um, improved performance, simplified maintenance, and enhanced security. By reducing the dependency on custom backend code for data retrieval, the architecture also minimizes the potential for bugs and security vulnerabilities associated with manual coding, leading to a more reliable and secure API structure. And I had a very interesting discussion on Monday where a student showed me that they use uh, basically this API database architecture with GraphQL in a real world project. And now I'm convinced that we will see such approaches more often as you could save a lot of boilerplate code. The Open Source Security, Open SSF and the Open JS Foundation have issued an alert concerning social engineering attacks aimed at taking over open source project. A noticeable incident involved the XZ Utils project, which faced an attempted backdoor insertion. It's the following article here. 
This attack appears not to be isolated with other JavaScript projects also targeted. And these attacks typically involve suspicious activities such as dubious requests to elevate unknown individuals to maintainer status, endorsement by fictionous community members and unusual code submission that deviate from normal project practices. And they have a list of suspicious pattern in social engineering takeover, the following list here. However, I think these are more patterns that are closely related to the XZ issue and there will be more attempts for hostile takeovers, especially since open source projects are gaining popularity. The last article is about a recent study co-developed by Visa that has found that more than 90% of stablecoin transaction volumes do not come from genuine users. It's the following article here. The analysis showed that out of approximately 2.2 trillion US dollars in transactions in April, only roughly 150 billion were from organic payment activities. And this discovery highlights the early stage nature of stablecoins in the payment industry, despite ongoing interest from major fintech companies like PayPal and Stripe. The data challenges the view that stablecoins, which are typically pegged to assets like the dollar, are set to revolutionize the 150 trillion US dollar payment industry anytime soon. In this study, they try to filter out the transactions initiated by bots and large-scale traders in order to see how much stablecoins were traded by real people. I think this is a valid approach, as for example, DeFi only works if there are arbitrage bots. Without arbitrage bots, Uniswap, SushiSwap and other decentralized exchanges would not work. And an arbitrage bot exploits price differences of that same asset on different markets or exchanges to bring these exchanges into balance and generate profit. However, this study was co-developed by Visa and Visa could potentially lose out if stablecoins gained more general acceptance as method of payment. DeFi will be a topic of the upcoming lecture series blockchain in the spring semester.